Cam Rogers coming at you for the Cam Rogers Show. Hit me up on Twitter, at MrRogers99, for all of the latest NFL insight out there. Let's get to those NFL headlines now. And guess who found a team? Eric Reed. That's right. He signed a one-year deal with the Carolina Panthers. The San Francisco 49ers, dealing with their fair share of injuries at safety, reportedly made a run at signing Eric Reed. And here's what's interesting. The collusion case that Reed has against the NFL, he's going to continue it and not just going to drop it because he's on an NFL team. So in 2016, of course, Reed was the first player to join 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick at the time during the kneeling of the national anthem to protest racial inequality and police brutality. Now, in terms of a football perspective, that's all the Panthers and Reed actually talked about. They didn't talk about the national anthem. They didn't talk about the kneeling. They didn't talk about Reed's plans in terms of protesting. That's what happened between the Bengals and Reed. You may recall the Bengals brought in Eric for a visit and the national anthem discussion came up. And that's when, well, essentially Reed was like, all right, I'm out. Or the Bengals were like, yeah, we don't really want to sign you. It was kind of this weird, bizarre situation between the two. Obviously, they didn't have a contract. And now Eric Reed is a member of the Carolina Panthers, a Panthers team that is trying to replace veteran Denora Searcy, who is dealing with a concussion right now. He was placed on injured reserve. Now, Eric Reed and Colin Kaepernick are both really good friends. Colin Kaepernick recently took to Twitter to show his support for Eric Reed. And these two, Reed and Kaepernick, work out together. They are very, very close. And you have to wonder if this is foreshadowing for Colin Kaepernick to eventually find a team. He's still looking for the NFL comeback to happen. Now, his lawyer last week, you may recall, I reported on this show, Mark Garrigo said that big news is going to happen this week. Now, whether that big news was the Eric Reed situation or... Colin Kaepernick signing remains to be seen. But with the Panthers now signing Eric Reed, it's going to be interesting to see how the fans respond. And I'm talking about the Carolina Panthers fans. How will the ticket sales fluctuate at all? And any other potential changes at play here with the Carolina Panthers? If there are no changes, or if there are better changes, in fact, more ticket sales, more ratings, maybe teams out there kind of see that as, all right, well, maybe signing Colin Kaepernick wouldn't affect our ticket sales, our ratings in a bad way. They could actually help. So in a sense, this Eric Reed signing is a bit of a test out there to see how the fans actually respond. Because like I said, Reed was one of the first people on the front line to kneel with Colin Kaepernick during the national anthem back in 2016. So I think the 49ers in particular would be very smart to at least bring in Colin Kaepernick for a workout. Just a workout. I'm not saying sign the guy. You can do whatever you want, John Lynch. But I'm saying at least give this guy a chance. Because I personally am sick and tired of hearing people like Austin Davis and Tom Savage getting second chances in the NFL and Colin Kaepernick can't solely because of his kneeling during the National Anthem. We don't even know at this point if he plans to kneel during the National Anthem in 2018. He may not. So that could just be moot to the point there. And look, for the 49ers fans out there, I think the wind is out of the sails a little bit, especially because of that Jimmy Garoppolo ACL injury. But the Jarek McKinnon ACL injury wasn't good either. So back-to-back -back versions of adversity there for 49ers fans. And... I've been interacting with 49ers fans on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. It seems like the hope is lost in a way. And 49ers fans are just like, all right, let's just put out C.J. Beathard, see what happens. We'll get a high draft pick in 2019. But wouldn't you want John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan to give Colin Kaepernick a call just to see if Kaepernick can make this work and reunite, if you will, in the Bay Area? And there's the argument out there that, Kaepernick would need time to learn the Kyle Shanahan offense. And look, the Shanahan offense is complex. But also, would you rather, from a pure entertainment standpoint, want to watch Colin Kaepernick throw the football and run the football, or watch C.J. Beathard 
sit there in the pocket and throw interceptions and not play well. Because we know who C.J. Beathard is. He's a backup quarterback. We know who Colin Kaepernick is. A quarterback who almost won Super Bowl 47, who has been there, done that. Multiple NFC Championship games. He's proven to be a gamer, a winner. C.J. Beathard is not. Now, our friends at BetDSI laid down the odds. Will Colin Kaepernick be on an NFL team in 2018? Let me know. So the odds are yes, minus 105, no, minus 125. If you feel passionate about this, and I know you do, go ahead and put your money where your mouth is, folks. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use my personal promo code CAM120. That's how you get a 120% deposit bonus. Go ahead and bet on the future of Colin Kaepernick. I know you think you have the right answer, so go ahead and lay it down on BetDSI, chatsports.com slash bet. You can tell them that Cam Rogers sent you over. But in terms of Colin Kaepernick and his future, we shall see. But I will say this. I don't want to see Tom Savage playing quarterback anymore as a starter. I don't want to see Austin Davis play quarterback as a starter anymore. And I speak about Austin Davis because the Titans brought him in due to the injury with Blaine Gabbert. Like, why? And the same can be said, by the way, about Blaine Gabbert. I don't want to watch him play at the quarterback position in a starting capacity anymore. So there you go. We'll see what happens with Kaepernick as we go forward here, but be sure to let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Meanwhile, a Le'Veon Bell trade, could it happen? I've talked about this a couple of times on this very program. CBS Sports, more particularly Jason LaConfora, is saying that a trade will happen at some point, and we have bet DSI odds for those, for that potential as well. Look, the Le'Veon Bell trade scenario is complicated. There are a lot of factors at play. And I think if there were to be a trade, it's going to be closer to the trade deadline when the Pittsburgh Steelers, you would think, have a better idea of when, if at all, Le'Veon Bell is going to show up. Now, the trade deadline is October 30th. So we got some time, folks. We have until Halloween Eve for the Pittsburgh Steelers to figure out a Le'Veon Bell trade. Now, Jason LaConfora actually said the Philadelphia Eagles would be an interesting sleeper team to acquire him. Now, Jay Ajayi is going to play this season with a back fracture, which probably isn't the best plan in my opinion, but do you, Jay. And LaConfora suggests that the Eagles trade Nick Foles to create camp space and then trade for Le'Veon Bell. Now, this appears to be a pipe dream, folks. That's what I'll say right off the bat here. And I know that the Steelers prefer to trade Le'Veon Bell to the NFC for obvious reasons. But I feel like the Philadelphia Eagles would be an exception, right? you got your in-state rival there. Would you really want to throw Le'Veon Bell to the Eagles? A team that just won the Super Bowl and could very well repeat for the first time since New England did it back in 04? So that's something to keep in mind there. And I will say this about Philadelphia. They do have two second-round picks to play with, their own and the one they got from Baltimore. So maybe the argument is there for Philadelphia to put together a nice juicy package for Pittsburgh. Let's take a look. Here's what I have. 2019 second-round pick, 2019 fifth-round pick, and yes, you read that right, Jay Ajayi goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Philadelphia Eagles get Le'Veon Bell. Why does Jay go to Pittsburgh? Well, he's on his final year of his deal. If you bring in Bell, you won't need Jay Ajayi. You won't need to worry about extending him at all. And you would think probably Darren Sproles is going to retire after the season, but the backfield is deep enough in my eyes in Philadelphia for this trade to go down and Philadelphia not having to worry about any sort of lack of depth there. So the important takeaway point here with Philadelphia is that they're in a very rough salary cap situation. Jay Ajayi, Brandon Graham, Jordan Hicks, and Ronald Darby are all already expected to be $20 million over the salary cap marker for the 2019 season as of now. So the Eagles have some big-time contract decisions to make, number one. Number two, they got to figure out if Pittsburgh actually wants to trade with Philadelphia. They could just straight up shut them out. 
Kevin Colbert, the GM there, could say, no, we're not trading Le'Veon Bell within the AFC or to you, the Philadelphia Eagles. So the argument for Philadelphia to make the move for Bell is obvious from a football perspective in terms of production on the field. The Eagles' run game the last couple of years has been okay at best. Le'Veon Bell in 2017 had 1,291 yards rushing. The Eagles running backs combined had a shade just below 1,800. 496 yards receiving for the Eagles running backs combined in 2017. 655 yards receiving for Bell. Bell out-received the backfield for Philadelphia last year. And Bell had 11 touchdowns last year. Philadelphia, that backfield had 13. So you want to talk about elite production? Bell has it. Now, will Le'Veon Bell be traded in 2018? The odds are on your screen. Yes, minus 170. No, plus 140. I think it's got to be yes at this point, guys. And I think you got to go ahead and bet on BetDSI. Chatsports.com slash bet. I'm telling you, use my promo code CAM120 for that 120% deposit bonus. 100 bucks deposited, you get 124 free. And if you want... Go ahead and use a good chunk of it on the Colin Kaepernick bet and this Le'Veon Bell bet as well because we negotiate these odds for you guys. We got them just for you. So go ahead, use my promo code CAM120. Tell them that I sent you and go ahead and vote with yes. That is my advice on this one because I do think Pittsburgh would be extremely smart to trade Le'Veon Bell. And to put a bow on this, there was a report out there that the Steelers would get a compensatory pick for 2018 if Le'Veon Bell just leaves and the Steelers, you know, rescind the franchise tag and Bell becomes a free agent this year. That would not be the case, actually. No compensatory pick for 2018. There would be one for 2019 if Pittsburgh wants to wait all that way. But if you're the Steelers, you could make that argument, hey, we're planning on getting a compensatory pick in 2019 anyway. So you got to give us, some other team out there, a third-round pick and then some. So that's what the Steelers should be talking about when they engage in these discussions here with, say, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Indianapolis Colts, the New York Jets, teams that could use Le'Veon Bell right now and eventually extend him because that's the other thing. They could acquire him in 2018, but they have to pay him as well because that's what Bell wants. All right, next up here on the list, Rashard Matthews. Kind of a bizarre situation with him and the Tennessee Titans. The Titans have officially cut him. Now, Rashard was getting all angry here because of his lack of playing time. And look, I get the argument. He was the leading receiver the last two years, and he wasn't starting this year. Now, it's a new regime in Tennessee. Mike Vrabel is the new head coach. Matt LaFleur is the new offensive coordinator. He comes over from the L.A. Rams. But this also comes as Matthews just signed a one-year extension with a base value of $7.5 million in August. So if you go off of that number, you would think that Matthews would get a lot of targets. Not the case. So here is the Titans wide receiver depth chart. Corey Davis, Taewon Taylor, Tajay Sharp are your top three wide receivers there. These guys aren't going to scare any opposing defensive backfields out there. So with Rashard Matthews now, he's looking for a new team out there. He caught only three of six targets for a total of 11 yards this year. So production, non-existent basically for Matthews. Now he's a good player, good red zone threat actually. So he's going to be picked up by somebody out there. But it's quite obvious that the Tennessee Titans did not use him enough. His six total targets this year rank fifth on the Tennessee roster. That ain't going to do it, especially when you pay this guy $7.5 million. So GM John Robinson obviously was asked, are you going to sign Dez Bryant? Well, Delaney Walker is out for the year. Richard Matthews is no more. You have to wonder if Dez could sign with the Tennessee Titans, a team that is Two and one. They have one ugly, but that's okay. They have one. That's all that matters at this point in the season. So Robinson told reporters that he is, quote, looking at all players to see who fits on this football team. 
However, he cautioned that the club probably won't add another wide receiver immediately. Now, Pete Carroll of the Seattle Seahawks gave a similar response about Dez signing with Seattle, but it felt like he was leaning more towards Dez not signing at all. Robinson, the GM of the Titans, appeared to kind of leave that door open for Dez. And I think the Titans appear to make some sense here. Like I talked about, they need a veteran playmaking receiver slash tight end because Delaney Walker is hurt, but there aren't a lot of good tight ends out there. So Dez is your option at this point. Delaney Walker was that veteran playmaking receiver on that offense. And with him gone, who's replacing? Nobody. Corey Davis is a fine player. He's a good route runner. Tajay Sharp, he's okay. Taewon Taylor, these guys can be productive. But for the most part, these guys are complimentary receivers. So you'll see that I have updated my top five best fits for Des Bryant. In light of this news of Rashard Matthews no longer being on the team, I think the Tennessee Titans could make some sense. So I actually bumped them up all the way to three. I used to have the Tennessee Titans on my radar way back in the early going of the Des Bryant sweepstakes. I talked about the Tennessee Titans as a potential fit, but it sounded like they weren't in the running for him. Now with a pure need at the position at wide receiver, I could see it happening. Now I am sticking with the New England Patriots as the favorite, as the team to watch out for to signing Des Bryant, and it could happen in October. But the Patriots are working out Jeremy Curley, and I have no idea why. I, I'm pretty sure Bill Belichick is trying to spite me right now. Bill, I know you watch this show. Just sign Des Bryant, prove me right, and we can all move on with our lives. Now, Cleveland's on the list because the Cleveland Browns have brought in Des Bryant before. The Redskins are on the list because... Well, Dez has mentioned the Redskins himself via Twitter, and Washington, of course, plays the Dallas Cowboys twice per year at least. Our friends at BetDSI have the odds as well for Dez Bryant, and they agree with me. From the Patriots' perspective, they rank second right behind the field, of course, at plus 210. Patriots at 275, Seahawks at 365, the Dallas Cowboys at 525, and the Houston Texans are there at plus 8. 35. I talked about these odds before. I think the Houston Texans and that number there is pretty good value, but I'm telling you guys, vote on the New England Patriots. Go ahead and use my promo code CAM120 on chatsports.com slash bet. Lay it down. I want you guys to go ahead, place these bets, screenshot the bet, send it to me and be like, Cam, I'm with you. I'm going with the Patriots. Or, hey, if you're trying to go against me and prove me wrong, bring it on. Let me see those screenshots. Chatsports.com slash bet. Cam120, 120% deposit bonus. Our friends at BetDSI. Really fun to play on, folks. Check it out. All right, so we'll see what happens with Des Bryant. I'll keep you guys updated going forward. Let's talk about the Green Bay Packers. Are they in trouble right now with Aaron Rodgers? and the injuries and all of this. The Packers are coming off a brutal loss to the Washington Redskins. And look, it doesn't take the ultimate football analyst to watch the tape and say that Aaron Rodgers is just not himself right now. And without a quality Aaron Rodgers on the field, the Packers are an average team at best. I mean, that's just a fact. So a local Packers paper wrote a piece on how Aaron Rodgers has been missing Wednesday and Thursday practices consecutively. And, of course, those midweek practices are uber important because that's where teams go through the game planning and go through the playbook and all this stuff. And, of course, Aaron Rodgers knows the playbook for the Packers like the back of his hand, but, of course, actually getting the reps on the field is important. The Friday practices for the Packers are typically recovery days. So even if Rodgers does play in a limited fashion during those Friday practices, it doesn't really matter much because it's recovery. In the last couple of weeks, Aaron Rodgers has been practicing on Saturdays. So like 11th hour type of stuff here, folks, in terms of Aaron Rodgers getting his practices in. That's not a good situation for the Green Bay Packers. That is not ideal for Mike McCarthy and the Packers' leadership here. And the Packers play the Buffalo Bills on Sunday. A team that stunned the Minnesota Vikings in Minneapolis a week ago. It's any given Sunday. I had no thinking that the Green Bay Packers were going to lose to the Washington Redskins last week, and they did. 
So who's to say the Bills can't pull off this crazy upset this week? So just kind of bear that in mind here. There's some worry within the Packers organization, it appears, about Aaron Rodgers' ability to be healthy, be effective, move around, ad lib, and all of this at the quarterback position. So will the Packers make the playoffs? Go ahead and vote. Type one for yes, two for no. Let me know what you think in the comments section. All right, let's talk about Doug Baldwin for you fantasy owners out there and Seahawks fans. Looks like he's going to be healthy for week four. That is my understanding. Pete Carroll said he's, quote, really hopeful that Baldwin will play this week against the Arizona Cardinals. Now, with that said, if you do own Doug Baldwin in fantasy, and I do myself, I wouldn't play him. I think you need to wait a week because I'm just foreseeing this scenario where Doug Baldwin is just going to be a decoy on the outside. And that's all. He'll probably see a very limited amount of snaps. And as a fantasy owner out there, of course, you want to put yourself in the best position to win by week. Not by year, not by two years, by week. And this week, Doug Baldwin does not make a lot of sense for me. So I am not starting him in my fantasy lineup this week. So if you own him, you may not want to play him, all right? Take a look at your waiver wire if you have to. Take a look at your bench if you have to. See what you can kind of figure out there. Now, with that said, if you're playing daily fantasy, and you should on fanduel.com slash chat sports, and you can get $20 for free, by the way, when you deposit five, when you use that link, you've got to use that link at the bottom of your screen, maybe Doug Baldwin will make some sense. From this perspective, nobody's going to own him. So when you guys play in those big-time fan duel tournaments, nobody is going to own Doug Baldwin because everybody's scared of that MCL. You play Doug Baldwin, you deposit some money, you're going to win. Especially if Doug Baldwin goes off, of course. I mean, if he's lowly owned out there among the masses that play on fan duel, and there's a good amount, and you play him, hey, you could get paid out big time. So FanDuel.com slash chat sports is that link you got to log on to. And hey, by the way, I got a game going on this week. DM me on Twitter. I'm getting flooded with DMs right now. The spaces are piling up. I want you guys hitting me up. I want to make sure you can get into my game for this week and take me down. If you beat me, you can put it on your resume. You beat Cam Rogers in Daily Fantasy. Pretty good resume builder. All right, Tony Romo, the comeback. Is it happening? So he appeared on 105.3 The Fan on Wednesday, and Romo indicated that he's healthy and he also wouldn't completely rule out a return to the National Football League. This is true, folks. Romo said that he played a lot more hurt in 2013 and 2014 than he would now if he were to play in the NFL. So he's saying that he's healthier in 2018 than he was in 13 or 14. So Romo said that his health wouldn't be a question in regards to a comeback. Now, of course, this is far from a ringing endorsement from Tony Romo of wanting to return back to the NFL. But usually when you don't want to come back, you don't even entertain the question. And that's what Tony Romo did. He entertained the question and he extrapolated on it, talking about his health and that his health would not be a worry if he were to return to the National Football League. Now, I will say this. The 49ers kind of have a need. Jimmy Garoppolo just went down with an ACL. Why not bring in Tony Romo for a workout? He can be that stopgap option. Romo comes to San Francisco. The 49ers make the playoffs. Maybe Romo can take him to a Super Bowl. Romo retires, waltzes into the sunset with the Lombardi Trophy, and my producer, Lana, is staring at me as if I'm insane, but maybe I am. And then Jimmy Garoppolo returns in 2019 and we're all back to normal. So I got the Dallas Cowboys at number two as well. Just because I think Romo can push Dak a little bit more. And hey, what about this story? As you see on your screen, there's Dak and Tony. Tony beats out Dak Prescott and Tony becomes the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Am I talking out of my butt right now? Maybe. But I got the Oakland Raiders at three. Buffalo at four, Jacksonville at five as well. If you guys didn't realize, I'm a nostalgic guy. So I like to see these comebacks. And I was the first to get on board with the T.O. comeback. 
you probably watched my previous episode talking about Brett Favre. That ain't going to happen. But here is the truth. Tony Romo did not rule out a comeback. And so I am extrapolating off of that a little bit. Jacksonville makes some sense because, look, Romo or Blake Bortles, let's be real. And then Buffalo, of course, because I think Josh Allen is just not ready for the NFL yet. But I don't think Tony would actually want to go and play for the Buffalo Bills, that I can tell you. So for the 49ers, should they sign Tony Romo? I know a lot of you 49ers fans out there follow me on Twitter. You like my page. Vote on this. I seriously want to know your thoughts about it because I have seen comments from you guys out there that the 49ers should bring in Tony Romo. Not a lot of comments, but there were a couple of them. One for yes, two for no. Let me know what you think. Could the Romo comeback happen? We'll see. All right, let's go to a quarterback who is actually in the NFL right now. Marcus Mariota looks like he is good to go this week against the Philadelphia Eagles. Kind of a scary injury he was dealing with. Some numbness in his hands, especially his throwing hand, dealing with some tingliness and all that stuff. And that's never fun. I remember, I think it was, I got drunk one night in college. And when you get drunk, guys, and you go to bed, you probably don't move much. And I think I fell asleep on my arm. And it was tingly for like half a day. And I got really nervous about it. So kids, sleep carefully when you drink. But anyway... This stuff is not fun, the numbness and all that, because you never know when it's going to come back. But it looks like it is coming back here for Marcus Mariota, which is good news. Now, he did see some game action in week three. It wasn't part of the plan, though, because Blaine Gabbert got a concussion in that matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Marcus Mariota was good enough, 12 of 18 passing for 100 yards in relief there. So, interesting matchup. Eagles, Titans. In Tennessee, Philadelphia has not been a world beater by any means so far this year, so I think there's a chance for Tennessee to get the victory here this week. 